Brown. I'm the Deputy Project Director for Baltic Power. I'm coming from Northland Power. Dzień dobry. And hello, my name is Piotr Ostrowski. I'm Deputy Project Director as well, coming from Orland. We started off with a team of about 20 core people and we've grown the team to now over 130 people. We really were bringing Northland Power, we've got the international experience of developing offshore wind and we've been bringing people in. We have people for the whole team, at, but we really brought in the technical expertise. With Orlin was bringing in a lot of the local knowledge of the energy sector here in Poland and the whole regulatory understanding the regime. We've brought people in from different parts of Europe to help us. We have over 19 nationalities on this project and without all of this expertise, we would not be here. We have people that have been involved in developing and operating offshore wind farms from the UK, Germany, Asia. And if I take a look at what we were trying to do, the timeline that we were trying to achieve, that is almost unprecedented in our industry. Because you set out some of the timelines five years ago, and we've been building on those timelines. When we sat down to plan the timelines for the procurement, hitting ourselves, getting ready for construction. Yes, that was really unique. Just to uh, explain how big complexity is, is uh, around that kind of projects. So we were going through development stage six years and the next three years that's the construction stage. So all together we are talking about nine years from the, let's say, idea to operational stage of the project. So. That's showing how much people with different kind of expertises we need to bring to the project in order to really do all these tasks that are really needed to reach to the end uh, of these projects. Now we can say a few words about the challenges that we were facing with uh, during the development stage, uh, which were uh, really a big one who never expect. And here we can uh, say a few words about, for example, COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, about the uh, inflation, about this uh, war on Ukraine that hits very much yeah. our supply chain and also all over the Europe and the industry. But also we were facing with some other challenges here locally, for example, within this uh, permitting uh, work stream. Uh, we were the first in Poland who goes through this whole permitting uh, path mm -hmm. uh, and even though that we have really good cooperation and a really good relation with the Polish authorities, we felt that this is something important also for all Poland, not only for our company, even though that was challenging because simply we were going for, for, together with the authorities through learning curves, how actually set up some rules for this new industry that was just built or being created in Poland. It was fantastic, but to be able to develop this project offshore with these really large turbines, we started off looking at 9, 12 megawatts back in 2020 into 2021. We're now using 15 megawatt turbines out there. On the sea, as you can see, there's a lot of wind that is uh, <laughs> wind, that is blowing a lot of uh, time during the year. So that caused the environment that we can produce a lot of green energy. So you can imagine 76 structures, 300 meters each, on the middle of the sea. But what's important is it's more than 22 kilometers offshore. So you're not going to be able to see it from this lovely area where we are right now. So it's also going to be undisturbed views for people. So you're bringing in this whole renewable energy for over 1.5 million households. And important is that comparing to the other renewable energy, for example, onshore wind farms, these offshore wind farms are a lot of more stable and brings a lot of more energy, which is also needed to stabilize Polish grid energy system. A Baltic Sea is a very good basin uh, for the offshore wind because there is a good wind speed conditions. There is a relatively shallow water here. And also I think what is important to mention that Baltic power is kind of unique because the distance from the shore and from our OEM harbor is uh, really close to the farm. So the time for us during the, also the maintenance, uh, operational maintenance phase is very short to deliver, for example, technicians from our OEM base from Weba actually to the site. 
We're also looking at developing the supply chain here in yeah. Poland because Poland has always been important in supplying sort of uh, tier two or tier three suppliers for a lot of the offshore wind um, for other countries. But now you can see that other uh, companies, some of the tier ones, they want to be coming in. You're starting to see more and more construction happening here. And if you have the supply chain, so the more that the wind farms are here that are being built, the more that people are going to want to come and invest in Poland. You are going to see more people coming, labor, and you're going to see a lot of the technology and investment coming here as well. Orlen is doing uh, right now also preparation for the other projects, so we are then even more than happy to be able to use this uh, experience, expertise, this knowledge, skills that we collect during the Baltic Power project and then to use it to develop the other upcoming projects. The project is really, really complex and uh, to get to that point we were doing a lot of different surveys to see what are the conditions of our site, uh, what are the conditions of the seabeds, what are kind of uh, the structures we can sit on it to, to put the turbines on the end. So we had to start visualizing what construction was going to look like you know, two, three years ago. So when you were doing all the development work, we already had to say, these are going to be the size of the turbines that we're going to need. These are going to be the foundations because there's different foundation types. So we've already taken the decision of what type of foundations we're going to be put. So we have already started the onshore substation. So we've already started pouring the platform for that piece. We're already taking a look. So we're going to have four export cables running through the forest, we've got landfall, so we're going to be having five horizontal electrically drilled sites to make sure that we're protecting all of the sensitive areas. And those cables are then running 29 kilometers offshore to the wind farm. As we're sitting here in September, we've already started the fabrication for our foundation. So we are doing flanges for our transition pieces. You have the foundations, these are large tubular piles that are going to be in the ground. They're going to be up to 9.1 meters in diameter. They are close to 2,000 tons in weight. And it's a scale that people just don't appreciate. And we've got these mass, very large insulation vessels that are going to be coming along. So we have a whole different logistics piece that we also have to be looking at. So that's just the simple piece of a foundation. Then we have all of the transition pieces that then need to be put on top of these foundations. Then we have the inter-array cables. These are all the cables that need to be put in and they connect all of our foundations and the turbines together. They then run to our two offshore substations and then those offshore substations will take the 66 kV and they step that up to the 230 kV and then that that electricity is then transformed and put into all of the four export cables that come, that run ashore, that are going to be coming through horizontal directional drills. So what that means is that the cables are then being buried underneath the sea. And so that way there's no, you keep all this nice nature 2000 area safe and we protect the environment this way. So we're trying to minimize all the impacts that we can with this. So we have heavy lift vessels, we're going to have smaller vessels that are going to be offshore that are going to be needed to protect the area, to help to guard the car guard vessels for a reason. They're protecting all of the area while we're doing the installation because we have lots of people that are going to be curious, but this is a construction site and each area is individual. We are doing our fabrication stage within 80 different places uh, all around the Europe and uh, also around 10 different places here in Poland uh, when we also are doing uh, our preparatory or construction activities. So you can imagine how complex is the project yeah. and how complicated it is to set up all of this uh, and do all this logistics, everything to be placed in good quality, on time, on the end to deliver the project successfully in 2026.